Christine Holgate's explosive appearance before the Senate on April 13 has thrown the Morrison government into full damage control mode. Their problem is, all they can do is tell blatant lies. I'm Robert Barwick of the Citizens Party. Let's listen to the obvious lies they've told and we'll reveal what the truth of the matter is. The first is the use of the term taxpayers' money. We hear over and over that Christine Holgate did not make appropriate use of taxpayers' money. Ms Holgate has been criticised for what she said in Senate estimates last October. I have not used taxpayers' money. We are a commercial organisation. Uh, is... <laughs> Morrison sent Liberal Senator David Van into the hearing on 13 April to try to make an issue about it. Do you still hold that view that you did not take taxpayer money, that Australia Post was a, is a commercial organisation? So what's the real story? Let's take a look at the official Communications Department website that governs Australia Post. Australia Post is required by law to operate commercially and does not receive funding from the government. This is what Christine Holgate was referring to. She merely restated official policy. Next, listen to Communications Minister Paul Fletcher in an interview with Sky News. But like any employee, Christine Holgate deserved due process. Was there due process? She says there was no letter given to her, that there was no proper, if you like, resignation protocol undertaken by Australia Post. Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Um, but the point I'd make is, uh, what is, what is very clear here is Ms Holgate has resigned uh, and she issued a public statement saying that she'd resigned. So it, it, it really is, um, there's no factual question that Ms Holgate has resigned. First, Paul Fletcher admits that there was no proper resignation. Then, in effect, he says it doesn't matter because it is a fact that she resigned. If it's a fact, Mr Fletcher, show us the resignation letter signed by Christine Holgate and Australia Post, as is required by her contract. Here's more spin from Paul Fletcher. Let's be clear on the facts here. A Labor senator asked a series of questions in Senate estimates about whether Ms Holgate had, as Chief Executive, authorised the provision of $20,000 worth of Cartier watches as gifts to four executives. This is a perfect example of how to lie by telling a half-truth. These are not the facts. They are only details devoid of context that are designed to mislead the audience into embracing the false narrative of Paul Fletcher and Scott Morrison. Why does he leave out the fact that the watches were awards for the most brilliant deal in Australia Post history? A deal that brought in $220 million over a five-year period and restored profitability to the licensed post offices who had been going broke under the previous CEO. All this time later, Paul Fletcher still can't bring himself to acknowledge this. Why can't he be clear on this fact as well? The watches worth $20,000 were given as a reward for a $220 million deal. And we're supposed to believe Scott Morrison thinks this is disgraceful? Remember the passion and fire with which Scott Morrison denounced Christine Holgate? I was appalled. It's disgraceful. The chief executive should stand aside immediately. So appalled and shocked was I by that behaviour. She's been instructed to stand aside. And if she doesn't wish to do that, Mr Speaker, she can go. For giving her top executives an award that is 0.01% of the amount they brought in for the company, the Prime Minister fiercely denounced the most effective CEO Australia Post has ever had. In fact, it is Scott Morrison's behaviour which is disgraceful and appalling. Next up on the litany of lies, here's Paul Fletcher again. Which she claims was approved by the, by the past chairman, John Stanhope, who was there clearly before the current chairman was in place, who took umbrage at this. And our government had that investigated. The Maddox report says that the previous chairman did not authorise it. This is simply a blatant lie. Here's what the Maddox report actually says. There is contradictory evidence as to whether the former group CEO and managing director informed the former chair 
that it was her intention to purchase the Cartier watches or whether the former chair approved the commitment of funds for this purchase. No definitive finding can be made in this regard. Paul Fletcher is caught in a blatant falsehood. He claims the report says the former chairman did not approve of the watches. The report says no definitive finding can be made. But it gets worse. Take a look at this note of congratulations signed by the chair of Australia Post at the time, John Stanhope. This note was on a card that accompanied the watch. So let's see. We're supposed to believe that the chairman signed the cards that accompanied the watches, but he didn't know about the watches and he didn't approve of them? How laughable is that? There are also two witnesses who say the chairman was personally in attendance at the event where the watches were awarded. Here's the next lie, the big one. The government did not dismiss Ms Holgate. Australia Post Board did not dismiss Ms Holgate. Uh, she was asked to stand aside during the course of an investigation and on the 2nd of November she informed the board that she was resigning and she put out a public statement to that effect. Yet not only did Christine Holgate's testimony reveal she was humiliated and bullied into making her offer to resign, the Prime Minister himself admitted the day after her testimony that he gave her no choice. And uh, the instruction was that the Chief Executive would stand aside while that was being done. What I stated in the Parliament was if the Chief Executive and the indication had been that this might be the case, was not prepared to stand aside and then that she might wish to leave the company. She might want to leave the company? Is that how Scott Morrison said it? She's been instructed to stand aside and if she doesn't wish to do that, Mr Speaker, she can go. Next, we have the former Communications Minister, Stephen Conroy, taken to the airwaves to attack Christine Holgate for being extravagant. Well, what's really a problem in terms of this report she keeps using to defend herself is the report goes through all of her extravagance, all of her outrageous extravagance uh, around her own expenses, and the board had done nothing about any of it. The hypocrisy here is gobsmacking. Stephen Conroy was communications minister in 2012 when the previous CEO of Australia Post, Ahmed Faor, took 78 guests on a $2.5 million junket to the London Olympics. There was no inquiry, no standing aside, and no resignation. Is there a bit of a double standard here? Millions of dollars by Faor, no problem. $20,000 by Christine Holgate, extravagant, off with her head. Finally, Let's hear what Scott Morrison says this is really all about. But what this issue is about, ultimately, all of us who serve in senior positions, whether it's as Prime Minister, a Minister, or a Chief Executive or Managing Director of a government-owned company, we all have responsibilities. What this issue was about was about um, the appropriate way that taxpayers' money and taxpayer companies are run. Once again, Scott Morrison lied. This is not about Christine Holgate's alleged use of taxpayers' money. Since, as noted earlier, Australia Post operates as a commercial enterprise that does not spend taxpayers' money. But if Scott Morrison wants to talk about the misuse of taxpayers' money, why doesn't he just look into a mirror? After all, the cost of investigating Christine Holgate was well over a million dollars. Then he ignored the results of the report because they exonerated her. As the Maddox report stated in Finding Six, there is no indication of dishonesty, fraud, corruption or intentional misuse of Australia Post funds by any individual involved in the matters relating to the purchase and gifting of Cartier watches. If you want to make the issue the appropriate way a taxpayer's company is run, then Christine Holgate deserves to be reinstated and she is owed a lifetime of apologies. By that definition, she is provably the best CEO Australia Post has ever had. Under Christine Holgate, Australia Post increased revenue by $500 million, increased profits by 30%, and had business efficiency savings of $281.1 million. And she did all this in the midst of a pandemic. Instead, the Morrison government has allowed Australia Post to hire a replacement for Christine Holgate before the Senate has even finished their investigation. Help us send a message that this arrogance will not be tolerated. 
There is not a moment to waste and the clock is ticking. Please sign our petition on change.org to reinstate Christine Holgate. You can use the link shown on the screen.